In this video, I'm going to build a city that doesn't rely on roads and city skylines. Everyone knows that cars are polluting hunks of metal that destroy our planet. Hypothetically, could we design and engineer a town that's completely walkable? Eliminating the need for the maintenance and upkeep of expensive streets and highways which crack and require maintenance year after year. So it was christened pedestrianism. I decided to set out with the limited array of tools available to me in city skylines. So it began with the first city. Pedestrian tin. In city skylines, I always start my cities with water and a power plant. Unfortunately, the standard coal power plant requires, well, a street to be built. So instead, I used wind turbines, which require no street access in order to generate electrical energy. But in this first city, with power and water going, I still had one problem. You can't actually zone any residential, commercial, or industrial building zones without a street. Seeing as this is a no streets challenge, you can see how this would get in the way. So I decided I'd rely minimally upon streets in this first city, then take the lessons out with me to the next city so that I could improve upon the design. Since streets would invite cars, I decided to just create roads that were utterly pointless and led in circles to nowhere and also ban combustion engines, so that anyone caught driving in a car on the road would be under arrest for violating the law. I also separated the residential zones in their own circle from the commercial and industrial zones in their own circles, unintentionally beginning to exhibit a pattern like alien crop circles. Then I joined them via dirt walking paths from one district to another to encourage walking. Well, not really encourage, but just force people to walk or even take the bike paths which went shooting overhead. But there was still yet one more problem. Despite my combustion engine ban and pointless road design, people were still driving from house to house in electric cars, thereby using the roads again. So I decided to make the streets not even streets anymore, but just little dots of concrete, making for a truly bizarre place to live. But at least the roads were no longer being used, just the dirt paths. Ah, a city that no longer relied upon streets. The only problem was that no, now no one could get their garbage taken out because there were no roads for the garbage trucks, causing a mass buildup of trash in everyone's disgusting house. And the lack of police cars and roads meant that the cops executed the law via helicopter, which was admittedly both excessive and expensive. So I decided that the only possible solution was just to destroy people's houses whenever they had too much trash in there. Then let someone else build another house instead. After all, demand was roaring. Then when they had too much garbage, the cycle repeated and I also destroyed their house. Unfortunately, all of this drove us into massive bankruptcy. This first city, which relied on all of the vanilla game parts, was a failure. Okay, but that's alright, this was all just a practice test for the second city. Pedestrian Tin 2. Realizing that the garbage situation would not and could not ever be fixed, I looked for answers elsewhere. And while I think you should save up your money, uh, the only solution I found was... The only solution I found was, uh, to literally buy the DLC for pedestrian towns, which I admit was rather naive I didn't start, uh, this whole challenge with that one to begin with. This allowed me to replace the traditional roads with brick-paved pathways on which to accommodate the foot traffic and still allow for the zoning and construction of residential, commercial, and industrial buildings along the footpaths. And so I got to zoning. Admittedly a very boring city of grids to start with, but I had to test out how we would collect garbage at the pedestrian checkpoints, then deliver that to only one little road that led to the town via the highway. See, the road isn't in the town, so it doesn't count. I know what you're thinking, AA, doesn't that seem kind of against the spirit of the challenge to still have one road in a totally roadless playthrough? But hear me out. This road is different. Cars just disappeared for some reason, then pooped out people at the end of the road. And then the vehicles drove into the side of the building never to be seen again. Alright, so to be fair, the main part of the city shouldn't have roads. Otherwise, I'd just keep having to bulldoze the houses for literally any issue. Pile up of garbage? We'll be right on our way to destroy your house. You need the police? A team of men are coming right away with sledgehammers to knock in your walls. No more problem over there. This city was good. Except for the fact that it was losing buckets of money every day. You see, pedestrian areas are extra pricey to maintain. It seemed like a utopia, except for the fact that it was losing millions and millions of dollars and was horribly unsustainable. A shame. The third city. 
Pedestrian Tin 3. Okay, so maybe grids weren't the best idea. Too many roads to maintain had made the second city expensive, and all the trash was gathered in a lopsided way on one side of the city before. But what about a set of concentric circles with the dump at their center? It was a brilliant and efficient design. An underground highway pooped out the garbage from the city, and the trucks could get anywhere by a short path from the center. I surrounded it with residential, then commercial, and then industrial zones to create a separation. A gradient of zoning. Only issue was that, well, there was an impressively unsightly dump right in the middle of town, to which everyone had a front row seat. But as long as we surrounded that with parks and enough dirt roads, you'd create enough of a buffer. You see, this city, also too though, was expensive. Maybe not as pricey as the last one, but I tried raising taxes to 15% to fund it, until everyone complained, then slightly lowered them by just barely enough so that people didn't leave, but were trapped and still had to pay them. Then we ran out of money again, so I tried making all of the districts tiny so that we could save half our budget. But that also didn't work. I had failed for the third time. But with no less enthusiasm and a plethora of knowledge from my failures, I embarked on the fourth city, the culmination of all our failed efforts here to forth. Ultimate pedestrian tin, the city of the future. In the previous city, dirty industry had ruined everything since it was too close to the center of town. So this time I decided to create a bunch of different circles for each type of zoning. The central node was the residential circle, a series of concentric rings once again, where we could take advantage of the short radius from the center to provide services like garbage men, education, and corpse removal, which became more and more problematic since I resisted funding it at the beginning, and couldn't figure out why all the cemeteries weren't enough to house the dead at first. Until I funded it, that is. Farther away to the south, but still barely in walking distance, we kept the dirty industry area, where factories coughed up smoke from their warehouses, making sure to keep it far away from our homes and children, but still in walkable distance. And on the east side of town, I began preparing the financial district. Since almost all my city's pedestrian areas were too expensive, I decided it would be a good idea to rely on scammy money-making techniques as alternate forms of playing around with taxpayer money to just barely cover our bills while we expanded toward legitimate financial stability. Unfortunately, the city never actually reached legitimate financial stability. You see, the pedestrian districts are just so expensive to maintain that I had to resort to more and more outlandish methods to make two dollars out of one. So instead, we collected taxes, then invested the money, which just wasn't enough to pay our bills, into the death and funeral industry, which turned out to offer highly reliable returns. The rest we invested in cryptocurrency, somehow making enough to generate a profit every fiscal quarter, mainly by buying the dip, and especially since we as the state didn't have to pay capital gains taxes on volatile insider day trading. That helped us finance the creation of more helicopter police stations, which we used to b just bulldoze the locations with crime to get rid of the crime, of course. And since people had to walk, bad people had a more difficult time escaping from our helicopter police state. So as the months went by, our financial district grew, and the people got less and less stupid as we used the gains from our insider trading to tax them more. To discourage people from being poor, we raised taxes on the poor and small business. That way they'd become rich and have more money to give us in taxes, and then they wouldn't complain about it. Oddly enough, having to walk around never really affected the city since it was designed so well. Most of our financial district where everyone worked actually didn't even need in-person employees. So everyone just worked from home instead of walking to work. But ultimately, I'd be lying if I told you that this city was independently sustainable. There were glimmering moments when we were barely breaking even, but most of the bold, exciting city of Pedestrianton is made possible by horrible state-run shadow banking and market manipulation, and this city sustains massive negative cash flows every week. But thanks to the precarious fun of compounding fiscal returns, citizens are relieved of a life of inhaling the deadly fumes of dangerous, environmentally destructive vehicular transport. I think it did a lot of net overall good for society. A population of over 26,000, and it keeps making money despite the fact that it's losing money every week. 
If you want to congratulate me for doing such a good job, you can do so in the congratulatory section of the video. But for now, a big thanks to my patrons, who as far as I know haven't committed any crimes. I'm Ambiguous Amphibian. Until next time, my friends.